I'm going to stand here and smile at you for a minute. First of all, I want to wish you a, a happy a happy Independence Day, a good 4th of July. I hope you had fun with your families or whatever you were with. And uh, I pray that you'll be with us today. We'll be going live at 1030 sharp live, okay? So go get your computer and your cup of coffee or your phone or your donut. And if you're having a donut, save one for me. And uh, we'll see you at 1030 City Limits Live. Pastor Jim out. Hey, good morning, City Limits, friends and family. We want to welcome you to our service today. And uh, we started our class. I'm trying to think. I don't think there's any announcements. Uh, we are still working on opening officially, and uh, we're getting closer to that point. When the time comes, every family that we have an address for will be receiving a detailed letter uh, with everything you need to know about our reopening. Okay, so that time is coming. 
uh, continue to be patient with us as uh, we attempt to do the right thing and keep everyone safe. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for who you are and all that you do for us. Lord, we thank you for our country. We celebrated the birthday of our nation yesterday. And Lord, we thank you that we have the opportunity to live in a wonderful country. Lord, there, we're not perfect. This country isn't perfect because we're not perfect. But we are grateful for all of the social programs that this nation does and the way that they try to put people first. We thank you for that. Lord, we just give you this service. We pray, Lord, that you would have your way completely, that everything that is said and sung and even down to the offering, that it would all be for your glory. Lord, we ask that every single person listening from the youngest to the oldest would be impacted forever by what you are trying to say to us through everything that happens today. So we commit every piece of this service to you. May you get all the glory, and may you be blessed by our worship to you. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to have some, some folks here with us. All of you wearing your mask and being safe, and that's good, so we can uh, tell people that we'll be getting ready to launch this place soon. Que se llene tu casa. Lisa's mic trail.
There was a time that uh, that God told his people, he said to his people, I want you to go up to the high places. It was called a Zugarat, not a yes. candy bar. A Zugarat is like uh, what you would see in the Aztecs, those big giant mounds that go up steps. Then on the sides, they would sacrifice their children and blood would come down. And it was all to the sun god Ra and, and to many other gods. And he said, I want you to go up to the high places and tear that devil's kingdom down. And right now, there's all kind of plagues, racism, sickness, and all going on in this world. And we've got to be the Christians that tear that yeah, devil's kingdom down. So let's go up. You ready? Come on. Let's go up. Going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. Going right now. Going up to the high places. We're going to tear the devil's kingdom. One more time. We're going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. We're going to tell the devil's kingdom. Let me tell you, we've been deceived by the devil too long. We're going to tell the devil's kingdom down. What he said was his has been ours all along. We're going to tell the devil's kingdom down. Let's go up, going up to the high places. We're going up to the high. We're going right now, going up to the high places. We're gonna tear the devil's king. Let's go up, going up to the high places. We're going up. We've got to be strong. We've got to be bold. We're going to tear the devil's kingdom down. We're going to reclaim everything that devil stole. We're going to tear the devil's kingdom down. Oh, church, let's go up. Going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. We're going to tear the devil's kingdom down. Come on. We're going to tear that devil's kingdom. Oh, we're going to tear that devil's kingdom. We're going to tear his kingdom down. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we'll pick this back up again. We're going to learn how to do this again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's good to see some other people came Ooh, in. Praise the Lord, man. Lord, oh, Jesus, Lord, thank you for Jesus. letting us come back together and worship you, Lord God. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Let it be beautiful in your ears, family, Lord God. Lord, together with our family, Lord, thank you, Jesus. The splendor of the King. Lord, in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and 
it trembles at his voice. Yes, it trembles at his voice. Come on, church. How great is our just can't even explain yes. how great you are, Lord. Yes. 
No matter what goes on in this world, Lord, chaos, trouble, not whatever goes on, Lord, you are bigger than everything, Lord. You are so great, Lord. And we just give you glory and honor, Lord, from our hearts, Lord. You are worth everything, and you are just so great. You are so great. So I just thank you for this time of worship, Lord. Just bless the rest of this time, Lord. We give it all to you. Everything for you, Lord. So bless the rest of this time, and I just thank you and, and praise you. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful day, uh, a beautiful weekend, Lord. Uh, we didn't get to have our 4th of July and, and have all the fireworks all over, but people had fun. They spent time with their families, and that, and that is very important, Lord, and that's, and that's a good thing, Lord. So we pray, Lord, for our country, Lord God. A lot of changes have taken place. A lot of things, a lot of things that were normal have had to stop and... <laughs> And take a pause, and it's been a long time. This has been this has been a different year, a different year. Um, nothing surprises us. Uh, we know that things are going to happen in this lifetime. It's going to it's going to rain and shine on the just and on the unjust, and God is going to have His way in the end. So we just pray that you would just uh, guide and direct us as we launch forward into Your Word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let me uh, put my water over here. I have to get a little something flat over here. I can put some water on, but that's okay for right now. It's not a big thing. So in the 4th of July, Father in heaven, I pray that you would be with me, Lord God. I thank you for Pastor uh, praying, uh, uh, praying with me a few minutes ago, but just, just thank you, Lord, for you put some stuff on my heart that I, I cannot share all of it. It's just it's, it's way too much stuff for uh, for one service, and and also I want to I want to process it through the filter of the Holy Spirit so that it does not come out in the flesh, uh, because sometimes it's truth and it could come out angry, and and sometimes I, I, we just have to. Take everything through the filter of the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, is this right? And so I want you to bear with me today as, as I share on the 4th of July, on the day of independence, on the day that we celebrate our independence. Hey, anybody know what date the, uh, uh, the independence, uh, the Constitution uh, was signed? I'm sorry, of the Declaration of Independence? Anybody know... Huh? 76. You, you were close. You, you almost got it. You got the box of donuts. Liz, right? Was that you? Okay, on what day? Anybody know what day? August. <laughs> if you're out there, don't laugh. Don't, don't you dare laugh. Somebody said August. Uh, was it Christmas? <laughs> what, what day do you think it was? July 4th. It seemed like it might have been July 4th. <laughs> I'm not going to say who, who that was. I'm not, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not, I'm not going to say a thing. But I want to talk to you about freedom because I think that freedom is very much uh, uh, misunderstood. You know, I think that uh, freedom, it's, 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 it's just important that we learn some things so we can navigate as to what freedom really is. We sometimes think if you add rules and you add rules and you add rules, 
uh, that gives you freedom. You know, if you look at our congressmen our, and all of our senators, they're all judged by their record on what new rules they came up with. Am I right or wrong? Right? They came up with this. I had this amendment, that amendment. I was there to sign. And they usually say he wasn't present or she wasn't present for 60% of the uh, uh, votes or 40% of the votes. And they blame each other on the fact that, that there was something on the floor. But there was a rule. There was a law. There was an amendment, a change. And you weren't there. And they judge you on that. Can you imagine in 300 years how many rules and laws and amendments have been changed? Uh, 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 in Buffalo, New York, uh, you can't shoot a wild turkey. It's a $900 fine if you shoot a wild turkey in the wrong season or something like that. Can you imagine there's a, a rule for a rule? Uh, you could be paddling a kayak and you don't know that you have to have a sticker on it in order for it to be in the water. It's got to be outside for 21 days. Who knows that rule? I mean, who at L.L. Bean tells you that rule though, when you're buying the kayak, right? So, so there's so many rules and and... And sometimes I think people think that these rules make us free, but they really don't. I want to ask you a question. You know, I want to talk about freedom. In, in a Detroit, Michigan, they have this giant fist. I don't know if anybody's ever seen it. A giant fist. It's a giant fist. It's their big thing. And under that, a lot of people don't know, is 2 Corinthians 13, 7, uh, 3, 17. I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, it says, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Jesus came because he wants us to enjoy our freedom, not to be, not to be bound in a yoke of slavery. He does not want us to be slaves to this world. To anything. He wants us to be free. He wants us to live free. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Galatians 5, verse 1, if you can get up there. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. All right, all right, check this out. It is for freedom that Christ set you free. Do not let, stand firm in that freedom. Listen, it takes a courageous person, it takes a bold person to stand firm in something that you know that you believe. If the word of God says it, he means it, and it's going to happen. He says, stand firm then, and don't let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. For healthy laws are not designed to take away our freedom, but to enhance our freedom. Anybody hear that? A healthy law is not there to take away your freedom, but to enhance it. I'll give you an example. I found our little granddaughter outside in the front. I'm just, I'm, I'm staring out the window. There's a couple of birds out there. The squirrel, I always see him looking for nuts. He looks like a nut. I think he's waiting for me to come out because they say squirrels are looking for nuts at this time of year. So I don't go outside. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> Y'all didn't get. <clears throat> anyway, so. So I see my granddaughter out there, and I'm thinking, in a pamper, <laughs> barefoot, she shouldn't be out there. Well, what well, she found out and yesterday, she climbed over our neighbor's fence, and they have a pool, I'm like freaking out, right? So uh, we went out and bought those little handles that they can't figure out, but they did. And, and then we went out, and we got these, because they were starting to find pennies. Now, now, now they'll eat pennies, and... and you can get a penny back. You, you, you have to wait, but you can get it back. But, but they have these little plugs that you put into the sockets so they don't stick stuff in the sockets, right? So that's a perfect law, a, a perfect law, a perfect, a, 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 there goes a rule that gives you freedom. It's gonna, that's a rule. Don't put anything in there, right? But it's going to give her life because she's not going to get shot, right or wrong. Right or wrong. They have another rule in our neighborhood, too. You know, if you're done at your pool, put your ladder inside or put it away. You're supposed to do that. Why? So nobody goes into your yard and, and dies and drowns or anything, right? It's just a responsibility thing. So God wants us, he wants us to enjoy our freedom. I want to remind you of something. That a healthy law is not there to take away your freedom, but to give you freedom. In the book of James chapter 125, James chapter 125, it says, but the man, you got it? Good. 
We'll start making those real bold. I love, oh yeah, you can see them back there, just I can't see them that way. Uh, it says, but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom or liberty, it might say in another version, and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. But the man who looks at uh, looks intently at the perfect law, at the perfect law, if you obey the rules, they don't take away our freedom, they give us freedom. How many of you drove here today? How many of you stopped at a stop sign? Okay, how many of you drove on two lanes? Well, it was two lanes on the way down. And how many of you stayed on the right so people could pass you on the side? Why? It's a rule. Many people come to this country and don't know that. You stay on the right-hand side, and you can do 55. That way, if somebody wants to pass you and do 60, they can do it with freedom, right? And there's no problem, and nobody gets hurt. Can you imagine if there were no stop signs? Can you imagine if there were no pause, if there were no merge, if there was no yellow, if there was no red? Can you imagine if there was no nothing signs, no nothing? Nothing, I mean, men working, nothing, just just, just, just drive how you want, just... Just Well, just like here on Ridge Avenue, people ride, mo ride motorcycles, they, they just shoot right across. And we've seen, I've seen five get hit in my 25 years here. Five laying on the ground. Some in bad shape, some got up and ran away because they were so scared. You follow me? So rules are there for something. They're not there to take away our freedom. You know, um, in the book of James also, it says James 2.12. James 2.12. Well, yes, Lord. You just told me to slow down. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy shall be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. I thank God that there's laws to drive because people know how to drive. Now, listen, that don't mean that we all follow those laws. Yeah, you know it, and I know it. Right? They say, put your seatbelt on sometimes. I, I get to, I say, what's that no, What's that noise? My goodness, what's that noise? Ding, 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 ding. What's that noise? Put your seatbelt on, and it stops. <laughs> I finally get to where I'm going. I put my seatbelt on, and I'm clear for a block thinking, wow, that was crazy. You know? Children, uh, they had uh, the Dobson Institute, from what I've heard. Now, this could have been in connection with someone else who did this survey. It's been told so many times, I don't know which story is true. So I tried to check on the one that was the oldest, you know, go back to the law, uh, first, uh, first mention to see if I could figure it out. And what they said was, Lisa, that they had a giant field. And they had an experiment. They, they put a beautiful playground right in the middle of the field. Then they invited a bus full of fourth graders over to the edge. And they're looking at that, they're looking at that giant playground. And they said to them, okay, well, you can play anywhere you want. Guess what they did? They went right for that playground. And they did not move from that play. They played on that playground. They got them away for the day. Then they wanted to take the experiment. It was a very technical experiment. It's real. They went away. Then they built a really strong chain link fence, real wide, all around, I mean, way around, far from it. Still had the playground, but a giant fence. Brought them back. They, oh, it's the playground. They said, you can play anywhere you want. Guess what they did? They went to the fence. They didn't play at the playground. They went to the fence. Why? Because it was the boundary. It's the boundary that's there that says, don't go further than this. And we need boundaries in our lives. There's things that we need in our life. God tells us he's put stuff in our heart that you know when you do wrong. And so God puts these boundaries in us so that we can understand. I remember when I first went into the Marine Corps, they shaved my head. They called me Coffee Bean. I was the only Puerto Rican. They apparently had never seen a, a Puerto Rican, so they called me Coffee Bean. It was my name. And, and shaved all my head off. They, they took my clothes off. They, they washed me down in a way I'm not even going to explain to you. But they just they said, we want to get all the ticks off. I, I have no ticks. And they said, what? 
and, and I realized that day you can't talk back. 1973, they could still punch you in the face. And, 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 and so anyway, what they did for the next 90 days, it was only 90 days. I went back 25 years later. I took Debbie to Second Battalion, right? I walked into that building and cried. Because that place took every right I had away. I got up when they threw the trash cans in the morning. I went to sleep. I ate whenever they told me to eat. When I was done, if you don't eat fast, you're done. Right, right Trout? You're done. And I'm like, don't get another spoon. You're done. You get up and then just walk away. Walk away. Don't, don't look anybody in the eye. I'm not, here for, I'm not here for you to be looking at me. And then they stand you outside with sand fleas biting you all over. And you had to read your book on the laws. I do not leave my post. I will not leave my post. I will wait until the, first, until the man comes up to relieve me of my post. I will stay there at my post. I will honor my post. I will, and, and, and that's it. That's all you learn. And they taught you. They broke you down from everything. I'm talking about when to get up, when to go to sleep, how to make your bed, how to do your bed, how to do your pillow, your clothes, every piece of clothes. Everything was thrown away and sent back to mama. All you had was their clothes, three of this, three of this, three of this, and one little box. You could put it all in one bag. Go ahead and put a rifle on this side, and you're ready to go. And what they did was that they took away every possible rule and boundary I had known. I was living in Philly. I I did what I wanted any time I wanted, but they took that away. They scared the living daylights out of me. But in that time, you see, and what happens now, I want to give you this. I want to see if you can follow me here. Follow me with, uh, there's a person in prison. A person in prison, we always think of taking uh, uh, the laws and rules away. Stick somebody in prison. Stick them there for 20, 25 years. Tell you when to get up, tell you when to go to sleep, tell you when to eat, tell you when to do this, I'll tell you when to walk around and exercise, right or wrong. Then they take that person and they say, uh, you're free to go. Here's $75, a pair of clothes, and a, a center that you can go to, and they let you go. But you've never had to make a decision. You've never known how to make a decision. They send you out here cold, and what they end up doing is that they end up I commit another crime so I can go back in because I'd rather be someplace because I'm not responsible. I don't know what choice to make. There's too many. I'm too free. In the Marine Corps, go back with me. After they drilled you down to nothing, they called you a maggot, they would then start to call you, I'm a Marine. I'm a this. And this is how I'm a Marine. Act. This is how you walk. This is how you mark. And this is how to respect. This is what you do if an officer comes by. And they began to teach you. And what we do is that we take away from people or we add rules, but we never add good rules and we never add something good. I hear parents sometimes, and I'm not just talking about jails and military. I see homes where all the kids do is get rules and rules and rules and rules and rules. And, rules, and there's no trust. There's no love. If you're going to take something away, give something back. Give them freedom or give them love or give them time. Anybody with me? Somebody say amen. So the next, uh, I think of the Star Spangled Banner. I, I, I love, I, I, I'm, I'm very patriotic, man. Ask my wife and my family. They, uh, they know, man. I'll go for walks and see a flag and just stop and salute just just people probably think I'm a nut, and I probably am, and that's okay. But the Star Spangled Banner, I don't know if anybody knows that. You know, it says, um, it says, or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Folks, I want you to notice that. Or the land of the free, freedom. And the home of the brave. Those two little things in that one little song mean something to anybody who's been in the military. It means that freedom comes. It comes at the price of courage. Of making a decision. A right decision. You follow me? A good decision. I got to make a decision to do things right. In the same way, I'll tell you what. That we as Christians need to do things that are right. 
We as Christians are looking at a world now that is falling apart, is in a pandemic, is privately racist, and all of us are secret agent Christians just, just trying to, I don't want to get in trouble. Is that what you think? Okay, Black Lives Matter, Puerto Rico, this matters, that matters, everything matters. Just, 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 I just, okay, I agree, I agree. Why? Nobody wants to be courageous and take a stand, folks. This stuff is hate. These people have been making rules. People now are making rules, and they're not giving you freedom. They're giving you more oppression. In doing this, I realize that there are many countries out there that are simply living in fear. Fear makes you do two things. Fear either makes you fight or you run. Am I right or wrong? If you see somebody big coming to you, and something that's a danger and you feel a, a clear and present danger, you either fight if you think you can or you book and you get out of there. Right? And many of us are doing that same thing. And we're living in a world now where, listen to me, they, yes, there are problems. Yes. But many people that I know have never been to a third world country. They don't know what a military state is. They don't know what a voucher for food once a month is. And you better make that little piece of dried meat uh, last because you don't get none until 30 days from now. They don't know what it's like. They don't know what it's like. I know uh, Leanne has also lived in a third world country. Some of us others have been in third world countries. But it can be tough, man. I mean, it can be hard to survive. And these are the rules. And these rules have been made by somebody so that you can be free. Everybody gets to eat. But I don't get to eat enough, and I work more than everybody else. You cannot experience freedom if you don't have courage. You cannot be a real Christian, man, if you don't have courage enough to say, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I love Jesus Christ. It is for freedom that Christ has set me free. And I'm going to share about that freedom. That freedom has nothing to do with colors. If you cut this skin away, we all have the exact same thing. Amen. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 1. Proverbs, chapter 20, or oh, Rabbah. Chapter 28, verse 1. It says, listen closely. The wicked man flees, though no one pursues. Let me say that again in tongues. The wicked man, you see how you can, you see how you're hearing it? The, the gifts are moving. The wicked man flees, though no one pursues. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Why does the wicked man flee though no one is pursuing? The guilt and the shame inside of us that make us feel that you've done something wrong. Anybody ever feel that way? Okay, you don't have to raise your hand. Watch. I'll give it to you this way. My first car was a Corvair. I had the attitude of Christopher Columbus. I, 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 um, you know, I conquered it in on Roosevelt Boulevard in Philadelphia, and I made it mine. I didn't know that you can't do the Christopher Columbus thing anymore, and the car was not mine, so they took me to jail, right? But I remember that after that, I got a license. I got my license. I was so happy. I got my license, right? But after that, for so many years, listen, like I'm talking. 20 years of driving illegally, 20 years of watching the cops, of slowing down, of turning my signal on, having my belt on and everything, right? That after I got my license, I still felt guilty. Anybody know what I mean? I, I, I got an insurance card. She told me to. Debbie's got it. You got your insurance card. You got this card here. You got that card there. It's right on top of your thing. Anybody stops you, pull it out, turn it on your phone and say, yeah, record. <laughs> I said, I've got everything I need. And still, so I go by a cop and I feel, what? I feel nervous. Why? That's because Satan's trap has been to take away your freedom. That law was not made to uh, put you in jail. It was made to say, hey, I can drive. I have the privilege to drive. I'm authorized to drive. I own my own vehicle. I am insured. I can go wherever I want in America. I'm a free person. 
And yet we still get nervous if we see a cop. Why? I've done nothing wrong. That's the devil that gets inside of us. And he does the same thing in your Christianity. He makes you think that you've done something wrong. There's something that you did wrong. There's something in your past. There's something in your life. There's that little secret that nobody knows about but you. And you go along feeling guilty and guilty and guilty. And that brings on fear. And you run from things you don't need to run from. We need to begin to stand bold. And say, God, clear my heart. Clear my heart of any false guilt. Clear my heart of any past guilt that I don't deserve. Clear my heart of any guilt. If the Son set me free, I am free. I am no longer bound by that guilt, but I've been free. Celebrate your freedom. A guilty man's conscience ruins him, a woman's conscience. Because, mm, I know I got some... Uh, you know, man, when something comes up, they a book or they look like I. I used to have people tell me that, hey, you look guilty. You did it, didn't you? Say, <laughs> I didn't do it, but yeah, I do look guilty. He said, "Why?" I said, "I've always been blamed. It's always been Jimmy. Something got stolen from the house. It was Jimmy. And Jimmy's taking drugs again. He's taking heroin. It, it was Jimmy. It was Jimmy. I got blamed for stuff I didn't do. And my brother Meek was like, they blamed you again, right?" <laughs> Got it. And he did. Right? I mean, I mean, I mean, there you go. And Satan's trap is to like, like, I just want to take your freedom away. Hey, signs are for what, man? What are those signs for? Oh, man. They put a stop sign up on the street. Wow, I got to stop. Man, that's a, wow, what a rule. That rule is not a rule that's going to take freedom away. It's a freedom that gives it's a rule that gives you life. I stop and the other guy goes and the kid crosses the street and they go, right? I see a bus pull up, a big stop sign comes out. I don't run over a little kid and ruin that family's whole life, right? These things are for our safety. Jesus comes in. I, I just, I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I go ahead of myself a little bit. So after Moses dies, after Moses dies, it is up to Joshua to take the children of God into the promised land. And, and uh, so he tells them very clearly, he says to him, he says, Joshua, and, and in the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 5, Joshua, chapter 1, verse 5, it says, no one is going to be able to stand up against you all the days of your life, Joshua. As I was even with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So be strong and courageous. So be strong and courageous. Because I will never leave you and you will inherit the land that I swore to my people. Are you following me? Listen to me. With freedom comes, I got to make a decision and responsibility. With freedom comes a responsibility. Just uh, nobody, nobody get offended. I'm, I'm not saying this for anyone here or anyone out there who's saying, well, I'm not going back because he said that. I was a bad leader. I had to learn. I had somebody come up to me and say, I can always tell if somebody comes out of a church that's had an oppressive pastor. Because they'll come up to me and say, Pastor, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so sorry, I had a fellowship at my house last night, and some people came over, and we had fellowship, and read the Bible, and we sang, we got to know each other, but I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, I just wanted to come and apologize to you, because I didn't ask you if that was okay. Okay, like, I hope everybody heard me, and I'm thinking, I'm sorry if I ever made you think that you have to come to me to get my permission to have fellowship. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean that. I want you to have fellowship. I want you to have friends. I want you to be free. Why? Because I want to trust you. And I want you to trust me. So he says to Joshua. Listen to me. I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. I want you to be courageous. Don't be a coward. 
Stop hiding behind the Bible or hiding in your house or hiding in your I, I, I know people say stuff to us all the time. We go, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Instead of saying, I, absolutely not. I don't believe I, I don't believe in that at all. This is what I believe. Now, if you want to be my friend, friend me. If you want to unfriend me on Facebook, then you got to do what you got to do. But my Lord is Jesus Christ. I had a friend of mine, he's very, very close. He said, oh, yeah, well, I know that you believe that there's a God for everybody. God would never destroy everybody at the end. I know you, Jimmy. And I said, no, you don't know me. No, you don't. I believe that Jesus is the only God, the only truth in life. Oh, yeah, but everybody's got a way to their God, Buddhist. And no, they don't. Jesus is the only way. I am unfriended now. I am a demon. Cowardly Christian. Tell you what, it says in um, it says in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of a sound, sound, sound mind. Think about that. Every time that we have something that we don't want to do or that we fight or flight from, fight or uh, fight or run from is because we have something in us that's making us feel guilty something in us is still making us feel ashamed and this is a day of celebrating freedom i want you to celebrate the freedom in your soul in your spirit i want you to celebrate not only not only the freedom here in america but the freedom that jesus christ died for your sins and you have been washed in the blood of the lamb that all your iniquities have been taken away and there's no need for you to be bound again by a yoke of slavery just go on and be not afraid Jesus uh, between the testaments right, the old testament and the new testament there was about 400 years And they said these were the silent years that the Spirit of God spoke not to man. Right? The Spirit of God didn't speak to man. They were just following their rules, making their rules. Judaism making rules, making rules, right? Right? Now they got 613. Right? Then Jesus comes on the scene. Chapter 4, I believe, Luke. I'm sorry I don't have it right here in front of me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to set the captives free. Now I know there's more to that, but I wanted you to focus on that. What did he mean by captive? Is it bars? He meant the religious leaders. He meant the Pharisees. He meant all the religious ones that make the rules. Say, oh yeah, well that guy isn't married to that one. Okay, well let's make a rule that you can't sit with each other. Oh yeah, well that one's not married to that one. Okay, well, let's make a rule that you can't hold hands. Uh, we, uh, okay, let's make a rule that they have to walk in separately, nine feet apart. You know, that's right. We just keep on making rules and making rules and making rules, and we think that we're keeping everybody happy. And what we're doing is, is strapping everybody down. Jesus said, "Listen, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. I'm the anointed one." I came to set the captive free. And the first captive is the religious captive. Is the one that's captive by all these rules and laws that I never made. Think about it a second. Oh, oh, oh my God, look at him. He's touching a leper. Oh my God, look at him. He's raising somebody from the dead on the Sabbath. Oh, look at King David. King David's eating bread out of the temple. Oh, 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 look at this. This guy's doing this on the Sabbath. Oh, look at this. This guy comes over and sits with sinners. You follow me? The rules, the rules, the rules, the rules, the rules. And we think that they're made so that we can be free. They're made to keep us more oppressed. Jesus narrowed all this down. He narrowed all these ten commandments he gave us. He gave us some moral commandments. But all these 600, he narrowed them down into one. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. I see dad sometimes. You know, I see this in the family, man. I see like, like, like fathers have so many rules. Now, I know some of us have been hurt. I know we've been hurt 
in our past. Right or wrong? Come on. I know we've been hurt. So now since I've been hurt and I was beat up, I'm never going to beat my child up. I'm never going to whack my child in the tail and say, that's not right. Uh, guess what? He's going to get in trouble. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Right or wrong? Right? Some of us have things that have happened to us in our past, and we take those things and pour them on to our children. They're going to suffer the same thing because they've not learned right. Don't let people touch you. Don't drive away with strangers. Don't go out. Nothing good happens after midnight. Get home. Dark outside. Why do you think? And you ain't going dressed like that. But how about if we had some trust in our kids? How about if we sat down with them? How about if we developed trust? Hey, I love you. I trust you. I can't. I'm only saying this because I care for you. This is what happened to me. I'm not saying it's going to happen, uh, happen to you, but I'm saying it's been happening since generation began. It's fascinating to me how, how like, all the government officials, you know, they, they, they are... Um, they're praised by all their amendments and by all their rules that they go vote on, right? All, all the rules that they vote on. Voted on this, I voted. Well, I voted 92% of all the, uh, all the amendments to Crazy Cat. I came across my desk. I was there in the House of Congress for all the votes and everything. And they're so proud because, because that's what they do. And so, really, I take a look at Joe Biden's rally. Really, we'll take a look at Trump. Oh, really, we'll take a look at that record. You know, uh, take a look at their record and see when they were present or when they were out on vacation. Right? And some of them have voted 40 times out of 290 votes. Right? And that's how you get them. But I want you to think, man, every one of those votes make it, makes it just a little bit. Right? So, uh, so it's a vote now. Uh, a woman can have an abortion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to pick on that one. A woman can have an abortion. Mm, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. You need an amendment. A woman can have an abortion up to the 12th week. Okay? So we, have, mm, we need a man. A woman can have an abortion if it's up to the 12th week and if she was raped. Mm, we need a amendment to that. She was raped. That. Okay, a woman can have an abortion if it's up to the 12th week and she was raped. Or she can have it up to seven months if she was raped by somebody and it was violent. Mm, I don't want that. Well, a woman has a right to her own body, so it doesn't matter when she was raped or if she was raped. If she's having a baby, she can get rid of it. Mm, well, okay, are we going to call it a fetus or a baby? Let's have an amendment on what to call it. Is it a fetus or a baby? They had a vote to see what they should call something that's breathing inside you. Can you believe me? Something that's got a heartbeat. They're having a vote. I watched the guy last night. Said, I'm sorry, I don't, I, I don't call that. It's a fetus. Okay, so how many fetuses have you taken out of the mother that were alive? Well, well a fetus is a fetus. I, I, it doesn't matter if it was one or a thousand or, or ten thousand. And he couldn't say. And the guy that was talking to him, right, finally got him to just, just, just shut up. He was angry. He wanted to walk off the show. But he's a doctor who this is what he did. He said, I, a woman's I, they've got a right to do it. They've got a right... And, and, and it just blew my mind. Our religious leaders. So Luke in chapter 4, it says, For the Spirit of the, Luke chapter 4, 8 says, For the Spirit of the Lord has become upon me, and he, is a, he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Are you following me today? Out of all the rules and everything, how are you living with your freedom? I mean, we live, listen to me. You see all this rioting and everything going on? It hurt me to even share this message because I know that some of what I'm thinking has got to come out. It, it, it's going to come out. I'm not in agreement with knocking down stuff. If there was some guy and he was a racist or something like that, take my kids and say, see that statue? Never do that. <laughs> Good. At least I know what not to do. But it's not possible to erase history. You, you can't erase it as like, oh, well, that never happened. Yes, it did. It did happen. It did happen. Each new generation adds a whole bunch of new rules, right? Each new generation add, add, adding new rules and new rules and new rules. You could have... 
not welfare if you do this. You can get food stamps if you do that. You can have this if you do this. If you get a doctor's note, I can get that. I get a handicap sticker and park in that. If I say that I have a bad leg, I can do that. And everything, right? Do you follow me? I mean, can you imagine? Man, you've almost got to be a lawyer to keep up with what's happening and changing every day. I mean, I've done stuff. I, was, I, I had a little fire in my backyard, right? I'm scared. I see the cops going by, and I'm scared because I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if you could have a fire around it. I didn't check. But I saw the neighbor have one a week before, so I thought I can have one. But I'm, I'm scared because I don't know the rules. Are you follow me? So it didn't give me freedom. It put me into like, man, I'm in fear again. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to call and find out. Am I allowed to have a little a, a small fire here in my backyard? Anybody follow me? Some don't want freedom. People have come out of prison and they've come out after 25 years, 10 years, 15 years. They've not had to make any decisions, any decisions. And they don't realize that to make a decision... If you're going to live free, it takes courage and responsibility. So they come out after 25 years, Pastor Andy, and they're like, I'm, I'm, I'm what? I'm, are you free? I'm what? I'm free. That's a what? That's an, uh, this is a cellular phone that can talk. Really? I've never even seen one. I heard about it, but I never saw it. And it's like, it's like a whole new world. And, and, and listen, what they did in the Marine Corps is that they taught you something. God's word says that too. If you clean a house and you leave it empty, when you come back, it's going to be seven times worse. What's he saying? If you're going to take something out, you got to put something in there. If I'm going to take out all these, all the, all this foolishness of fear and this fake fear, Jesus Christ said it. He said, take my yoke upon you. He says, my yoke, I'm already carrying your load. That's why I'm going to die to carry your load. You link up to me, and you're going to have freedom and walk in freedom. He said, well, well, I mean, I'm still yoked, but you're yoked to me. You're yoked to eternal life. I'm yoked to freedom. John 8, 32, please. John 8, 32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Some people say make you free. So I'll set you free. But you've got a decision to make because it takes courage. And you have to make a decision if I'm going to live free or not. Just like that prisoner that came out. And many of us think, well, I've never been in prison. I, I don't have that. Do you? Take a good look in the mirror and see if you're, you know, caution and apprehensive about everything that you do, every move that you make because you're scared of, uh, you know, getting in trouble or because Satan is in your ear telling you that you're already bad. In conclusion, God, God called us in this chaotic time, in this chaotic time to stand up and to be courageous, to make a decision to live in our freedom, to know that, listen to me, that with all the stuff that's going on, if you really take a look, don't uh, don't look at the stuff about, oh, come and visit our oceanfront. It's beautiful. See how the people are living. See how the people are living under a military state in Paraguay. Everybody's on street corners and the Army's got machine guns. See how they're living. Right? Try to take a picture on that day. It says in Galatians chapter 5, this is probably one of my favorite, favorite scripture. It says, uh, you, my brothers, uh, you were called to be free. Do not use your freedom to indulge in the sinful nature. I'm free to live right, not free to live wrong. When I live wrong, I'm going to get guilty again. But rather, serve each other in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, for you will destroy each other. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful, of the sinful nature. 1 John 4.18, I'm going to end with this. 
For there is no fear in love. God loves you. He set you free. That stuff that you fear sometimes is your past trying to creep up on you. That old man's still not dead enough. You need to kill him for sure. And only Jesus can do that by you reading the word and knowing that the that by the blood of Jesus Christ, he has set you free from the law of sin and death. And you are not that man or woman that you were before. So stop walking like him and talking like him. Perfect love drives out all fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love because love is perfect. Perfect love loves. City limits, I want you to stand with me if you would. Just, just, just stand with me. Anybody out there, if you want to stand or put your hand up. Thank you for joining us also this morning. I, I, I do want to draw attention to that. I'm well aware, staring at this little red dot, that you're out there. I can't see your faces, but I'm hoping that, that this kind of let you know something. That to live free takes courage. That to live free is a responsibility. That to live free is knowing rules and why they keep us safe sometimes. They keep our children safe and let us. Uh, uh, so I have to stop so somebody can drive by safely and get home. And that's called a stop sign. I have to put out my ladder inside of my pool or I had to put it in my shed so somebody else's child doesn't come in and drown in my pool and I'll ruin their whole life. Right or wrong? Father in heaven, I come before you, Lord. As we celebrate our Memorial Day weekend, Lord, our independence, sure, sure, history shows there was a lot wrong. But that's history. That's what we've come through. If they, if they look at the conquistadores, they used to do horrible things in the name of Christ. But that's history. That's not us now, Lord God. Let us just keep it simple. Love the Lord, my God, with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love me, and then love my neighbor as myself. Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord, and we thank you for this freedom, for it is with freedom that you have given us, not to be enslaved again to a yoke of slavery. Help us to live in freedom today. Help us to be uh, courageous and not be scared to say what we believe because that's when people really respect you. Not when you yes them, but when you say what you believe, they'll respect you. Just say it in love. So, Father, we thank you for freedom. We thank you that we would not have freedom if you did not die on the cross for us. If there's anyone out there and you do not know Jesus Christ or in this room and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your hand or raise your heart or raise your voice and Say, Father in heaven, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Take away this guilt and shame and fear that I have when I do things because I feel guilty and convicted and set me free from that, from that whole emotion, knowing that you have taken the sting for all that sin, died on the cross for me, and now you rose again and are sitting at the right hand of the Father and will someday come to take me home. Father, we thank you, and we wish you a good weekend, a good day. Bless your children. Keep them all safe. May the peace of God that passes all understanding guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Now it's a very important time. It's the time when we all at City Limits clap. It's time to give to the Lord. Wanted you to know anybody who ever has any prayer requests, if you bring them, we, we'd just be more than happy to share them. And, and uh, thank you, Jesus. Let me just take a look at this for a second. Father, we just thank you for this offering and pray that you will just, uh, it'll be used for your glory. For your glory, Lord, to, to bring you glory. And we are free to give or to not give. That's, that's it. That's a decision. You can decide to give or not to give. So I pray uh, that you would give out of a heart of love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.
Also, I just wanted to share with you uh, behind me, I think on the screen, uh, 484-357-1210 is our textable number. It's going to be found on our Facebook site now, which is City Limits Assembly of God at Facebook.com, uh, or pretty soon it's going to be on our website, and I look forward to that day. It's also got a little, um, what do you call that, Scantron that you can scan on there, and uh, not sure if that works, but you can check it out. Okay, and uh, I believe it'll do either a one-time gift or it can do a, a recurring gift if you wanted to, but it will only take it if you, if you accept, if you activate it, okay? So uh, thank you very much. And then some of you may not believe in, 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 in all these phones and all this fancy electronic stuff. I want you to know that you can mail a check. Yes, we do take checks to City Limits Assembly of God at 302 on Ridge Avenue, Allentown, Pennsylvania 18102. City Limits Assembly of God, 302 on Ridge Avenue, Allentown, Pennsylvania 18102. Thank you. Hey, I have a prayer request here I want to pray for. Prayers for Layla Sister at Tarixa in Florida. Her knee is swollen. And a lot of pain. Boy, I know about knees. <laughs> I know about knees. Many of you may or may not know that the bottom thing that holds my knee in came loose. So I have to have it done again. After it was, I thought I was all, all gone. But, but let's, let's pray for it. Tariqsa. Father in heaven, we come before you and pray for it. Tariqsa, Lord. I, I, I don't know what caused it. Uh, swelling is usually, inflammation is usually a sign that it was bumped or bruised or something so I pray that uh, she would get to the doctors and I know that there's a lot of fear going to doctors now in Florida because uh, of the spike in COVID but I pray that you would get her to a place that could take a take a look at her knee and see what the swelling is and give her some kind of relief and then also take x-rays or take an MRI and tell her exactly what is going on and how to repair it but for now we pray for the pain and the swollenness that you would just give her wisdom, Lord God, to raise her leg, to ice it, and, and to put some compression on it. And, and we thank you, God, that you're going to give them wisdom on how to take care of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, church, I want to thank you all for being here today. Everybody out there on, on Facebook land or Facebook Live land, I want to thank you for being here. Um, please uh, uh, tune in our, I want you to, I want you to join in on our Zoom classes. I want to tell the men out there right now, three weeks from now, we're going to be having, I think I'm going to get a humongous one who knows how to cook too, and I got a couple, and Jose, and a couple of others. Not, not me, but, but I like to watch. And, and we're going to have a, a manicure. I know that the women have a manicure. We're going to have a manicure. A manicure, a barbecue six feet apart. We're going to be throwing the hot dogs at you. You catch them in a bun. If you don't catch the first one, maybe you'll catch the second one. Wear a mask. We're going to be safe. We're going to have fellowship, and we'll find out exactly what. But I want to tell you now so you can get ready. We need some man fellowship, God. Come on, right? Come on, church. We need some man fellowship. We need, we need to have some men in the house. So God bless you. You have a great day. May the Lord just be with you and bless you with sunshine and beautiful weather all day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Pastor Jim out. Hey, hey, hey folks, uh, just, just a little something that I, I forgot that we want to do every. Wow, yeah, this is very important. I almost uh, forgot about it. Uh, Troll uh, tr Liz, to, would you stand up, please? Tomorrow, Liz will be 32 years old, and Tro, Tro will be. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Deacon Liz. And Tro, happy birthday to you. Hey, folks, I also want to tell you something that we want to do as people start to come in, and there's some more people coming in. It's good to have you here. Good to see people in the house of the Lord. I had some other people call me. I told them that we'll be opening 
soon, but, but they could come in and just sit and nicely. Uh, we want you to wear your mask. I don't wear it because I'm about 10, 12 feet away from anybody, and I try not to preach that loud now. I think I have to clean the lens on the, on the, on the camera. But um, I just I want you to leave in a nice orderly fashion. Start in the back. If you're going to fellowship, fellowship outside. Separate a little bit. It's nice and cool. Uh, the wind is, the breeze is blowing a little bit, okay? So that we can keep this place nice and sanitized, okay? Thank you so much. Thanks for wearing your mask. Thanks for being obedient with that. And, and hey, listen, when we wear them, uh, I'm taking care of you and you're taking care of me, okay? So if I get close to you and I have one on, it's not uh, that I don't love you. It's that I love you. I want to care for you. God bless you. Thank you.